This is Dora from Taliba, and I'll be presenting my research proposal on global innovation and examining its prominent prevalence in various parts of the world and its distribution. So what exactly is frugal innovation? Frugal innovation, initially known as jugad, a Hindi word meaning improvisation for a quick fix, is the process of reducing the complex cost of goods while maintaining their quality. It's basically achieving more with fewer resources. So instead of building with products um, and improving its new features, it's basically taking the features out and maintaining the bare essentials of the product um, and using that instead. As you can see in my illustration, with frugal innovations, frugal, frugal doesn't mean cheap. Frugal has the same performance quality as a standard product would, whereas a cheap product may ha have a decrease in performance and quality, while as the cost that's the reason why it's cheap. But frugal is cheap, but the performance is in sacrifice. So what's the difference between innovation and invention? Invention is, the crea is creating new things from new ideas, whereas innovation is the application of new solutions that meet new constraints and requirements and improvements. So you can't recreate the wheel. So what are conditions that encourage frugal innovation? Harsh environments that need robust products, bad infrastructure that require lightweight products, simplifying the product, doing more with less, and infrastructural constraints. A large, and also a large underserved middle class when served firms can achieve economies of scale. So why would so you would ask why would people want a create frugal innovation? Um, a lot of MNCs, multinational corporations, can benefit from this due to economies of scale. So who are the innovators? The innovators are people who view constraints as an opportunity. They want simple answers and products that do what they need. Innovators then strive to create sophisticated products, but want products to solve real-world problems and create value. Most innovators do not go to school. They, not, they don't go to school to become innovators. They create it for their own benefit and value. Uh, they also have no capital. And these are some frugal innovations that have been created. This is the Mitocool fridge, which costs about $50. It's made out of clay and can keep fruits and vegetables and other items uh, fresh for five days and uses no electricity. And over here you can see the projector. Um, it's made out of a lunchbox and it's operated using a cell phone. Uh, it costs about $50 or less. This over here is a, um, an ultrasound made by GE. Um, it is handheld. It costs seventy nine hundred dollars compared to other products. Similar compared to other ultrasound products that can cost about a hundred and up to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So this has dramatically improved prenatal care in underdeveloping in developing countries. And another cool frugal innovation is the advertising billboard that uses humidity, the air humidity, um, to collect water and purifies it, and it creates about ninety liters of water a day. It's in Peru, Lima. So who are the contributors to frugal innovation? The top countries so far have been India and China. Uh, there are contributors all around the world. Um, and frugal innovation isn't necessarily a product. It doesn't have to be a tangible thing. It can also be a service. Um, for example, microfinancing. Uh, and also, it's not just individuals contributing to frugal innovation. There are also MNCs, multinational corporations, looking to expand into new markets. And in order for them to do that, they have to adapt their products to the, um, the new markets that they're taking it to. An example would be in India. They have, um, in India and other developing countries, um, Unilever has created products such as shampoo in little packets. So instead of buying a, sh a big bottle of shampoo that would cost here three dollars, they can buy some a little packet of shampoo that comes um, in a sample size about this big, little um, for about five cents, uh, and that's a full innovation. So what are the what is the opportunity for MNC? A lot of the markets in developed countries are saturated, so they want to expand into markets that haven't been tapped through frugal innovation. Um, and they want to get into the BOP, which is the bottom of the pyramid. There is about 4 billion people um, on the planet that lives on less than $2 a day. So you would think that because they make less than two, because they have, they live on less than $2 a day, why would the multinational corporations want to go, to go into them? It is a new and untapped market, and through economies of scale, they can um, 
they can have a benefit. They can benefit and make a profit from it. So my research question is, why is frugal innovation more prevalent in some developing countries compared to others? What I've done and looked into my research, a lot of the frugal innovations and innovators have come from China um, and India. There are frugal innovations from, other, from all around the world, but a majority, majority of them come from those two countries um, and also South Africa. But I wanted to know, what about the other countries? There are a lot of countries that have similar constraints, similar economic standings. Why isn't there a prevalent um, number of people making contributions to frugal innovation? And I also wanted to know why and how, if these products that are frugally invented or um, services, are they being transferred to other countries that have similar constraints? And are they being used, um, such as the billboard, you would say, you know, it could be taken to another country, is that being used, um, and how would that be distributed? So my hypothesis is that Google innovation is more prevalent in emerging economies with greater populations, such as India, and political, cultural, and societal influences also impact Google innovation and how innovative people are in economies, uh, in emerging economies. Uh, what I've seen from research is that China and India have the largest population in the world, and they have the greatest amount of contributions to frugal innovation. But also, I want to look at the political, cultural, and societal influences. Speaking with my supervisor, um, my advisor, Professor uh, Shiva Kumar, um, a lot of, uh, in India, frugal innovation being innovative is something that's highly respected. So it's also a cultural aspect. People um, in India want to be looked up to as an innovator. It's something that's encouraged um, in their culture and in, in, political, in their politics and societal um, views. Whereas in other countries, um, such as my country, um, where I'm from Uzbekistan, innovation is not something that's very um, encouraged. It's something that um, is just brought into. And I feel I want to know if um, a lot of other cultures and other um, emerging countries have the same, um, same thing. So how will my research be collected? I'm going to determine if there's a correlation between the size of populations and the number of frugal innovations. So what I'll do is I'll look at India, I'll look at China, and I'll look at all the other countries that have made frugal innovations, look at their co uh, population, and also see what, how many um, frugal innovations have been contributed. And then from there, I'm going to look at what um, is their political, societal, and cultural um, background. How did that influence them to create um, these frugal innovations? Uh, and then I'm also going to look at if a product such as the billboard is present in um, another country with similar constraints, how was that distributed? And if it is being distributed, or the mitochondrial fridge. So a lot of, I, I want to look and see if that product is available in Africa, or would they have access to it, or do they even know about it? Um, and I'm going to also look into countries that have not made contributions to frugal innovation, and I'm going to see what, um, what, what this political or, or cultural or societal influence has had a role and if um, their population um, did as well. And what is the significance of this research? It will provide the opportunity for, econ for economic growth and development um, of developing countries and encourage frugal innovations. It can also provide ways to solve real world problems with limited resources. Um, researching this could also provide a way to potentially distribute these frugal innovations ma uh, to the mass and uh, make it more available in countries and in societies that would need it and that can benefit from it. Uh, it can also provide a way to alleviate the BOP, the bottom of the um, pyramid. These are some other full frugal innovations I thought I'd share with you guys. Um, that's an iron being used to heat up some water or some milk. That's a really cool innovation, um, I believe. I got it uh, it's in India. They use the key to, it's a quick, so frugal innovation basically is providing real world so, uh, solutions to, and they're quick fixes um, that does the same thing. So, um, and there's another bike that has the uh, motorcycle uh, seat to it. And that's a another way of, I guess, moving heavy cars. Any questions? Multinational corporations. So they're the big corporations that um, just deliver vaccines. Any other? Yes. Yeah. 
they are there are parts from Women's Feast that I wanted to include into my um, Yes, frugal innovation is, I mean, it's coming from everybody, individuals and immense keys are trying to get into frugal innovation because they want to go into these new markets and adapt their products to be able to be um, used by their, the new market. So that's, that's a great question. Um, so I am doing research on to see if um, these frugal innovations are being shared or if these multinational corporations are taking these products into new markets to see how if that would work. Um, so that's something that I will be doing more research on with my... Um, I think they're. I think they're they're different in um, in some aspects. Frugal innovation isn't. Um, it's basically it's. You're not creating a new product. You're you're basically. Um, you're creating a real a solution to something that um, already exists. So I think I mean I, it is in some aspects similar to social entrepreneurship. Is that what? Um, and that it helps. I mean, this is being used so that it can help people and achieve um, a change in the world. So in some aspects, it is being, uh, it's similar, but I think frugal innovations are more quick fixes. So they're like quick answers, whereas social entrepreneurship is like for the greater good. I mean, a frugal innovation has the potential to, um, you know, be used as, a, I guess, as in a mass marketed way. So they're very similar in its core, but I feel like, Google innovations are real quick fixes. To What I, what I will be looking into. Um, as I mentioned, um, there are a lot of other factors, societal, cultural um, factors that influence these people. So in India, um, a lot of uh, innovators are looked up to. It's a cultural thing. They want to be innovators. They People want to look up to them. So I haven't looked into how um, the cultural aspect of Lima or South America is and if there are political constraints that are into it. Um, but as far as uh, in India, uh, um, there are um, encouragement for frugal innovations because that's, you know, they want to
so, yeah, so frivolous innovations are also services, like uh, micro um, financing. So it's not just a product. It's also, as you mentioned, it could be. So yeah, so there, so like as I mentioned, frugal innovations are services like uh, the microfinancing, where uh, I believe in Bangalore um, or in Bangladesh, um, where uh, they lend out um, small amounts of money to locals so that they can start their own business. Um, I would say about twenty dollars or so, and then they would they get, they're given the time to make small payments, um, and that's a frugal innovation. So it's not necessarily a product; it's also No, but I'll, I will definitely look into it. See if Um, I have we ha I have done research on that, and I feel like a lot of these products that are being uh, that I don't believe that these products that are uh, being frugally used um, in parts of um, India and in the developing countries will not easily transfer over back into developed countries, just because they all already have something um, that is developed and this I idea or ideal that if you know this is frugally invented, you this cost say much less than this, it must be inferior. So first, we'd have to change the mentality of the way these, devel these developed nations think, that just because you paid more doesn't mean um, it's going to have the same quality, or just because you paid less doesn't mean it's of inferior quality. And I think before we can transfer these um, frugally innovative things back into developed countries, I think that's something that would have to be addressed um, socially. Um, and until we do that, that it's not going to, you know, it, it'll be really hard to bring them into. Yeah. 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 Yeah